Do you suffer from muscle aches and pains? Has it been labeled fibromyalgia for a lack of other things to call it? Have you been treated for recurring pain that you did nothing to earn? Do your adjustments always seem to go out? Maybe it's time for a different perspective. It may be referred pain from a distressed organ otherwise known as viscerosomatic pain. Introducing the doctor who thinks outside the box, Dr. David Peterson. Are you tired of suffering? Are you ready to look at a different perspective for the cause of your aches and pains? Referral from distressed organs may be the source. Let's get started. Unless it occurs in an area known to precede life-threatening situations, such as those experienced with a heart attack, visceral somatic pain is largely ignored. Even then, this pain is typically treated as arthritis or bursitis until the actual heart attack occurs. Often people present with symptoms that are a result of one or more organs in distress attempting to tell us that we have overloaded them. The internal organs of the body, especially those in the abdomen, are known as viscera. Referred pain from the viscera can only be understood when the organ is carefully studied with reference to its embryologic development, in which case it will be seen that the usual visceral pain patterns follow the embryologic segmental relationships, which are determined by the innervation of the blood vessels in the early development of the fetus. At birth, the abdominal brain is fully developed and fully functioning, fully able to control the inner workings of the body. Even children born without brains have fully functioning abdominal brains and abdominal function. The cranial brain? Well, not so much so. The only part of the inner workings of the body the cranial brain controls is when to pee and poop. At birth, babies' brains are learning to live in the outside world. Between birth and three months, the baby's cranial brain may start simple tasks like smiling, raising their head, tracking objects. Those of you with kids may have experienced the unexpected <laughs> diaper changing events. Even their ability to grasp oh, uh, your finger at this point oh, is a reflex God. act, not a conscious act during the first two months of life. Viscera each have a specific function to perform in order to keep the entire system alive and well. Each organ has a certain criteria in order to continue functioning in harmony with the rest of the systems, such as oxygen, nutrition, and elimination. Viscera can be overstressed by foods, nutritional starving, chemicals such as drugs, changes in the components of the NEI supersystem controlling the blood flow, hormones, and the immune responses. Disturbances in the hollow viscera such as the stomach and intestines are due to imbalances in the digestive apparatus. Fatigue and the consequent failure of digestion leads to distension with gas, absorption of toxins, and faulty elimination. Distension causes pressure on the blood vessels and lymphatics, reducing or restricting the flow. And overstimulation of the nerve endings in the walls of the viscera, and this initiates the reflex viscerosomatic pain. When physiologic needs are not met, other organs are not able to perform their tasks which then overtaxes other related organ systems, resulting in multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. When we overload an organ, we create a visceromotor reflex or a viscerosomatic reflex. Pain from abdominal brain dysfunction is difficult to diagnose due to its vast physiologic influence and its anatomic location. We are not normally aware of the viscera doing their daily work because they have no sensory nerves. 
Thus, chronic pain stimulation from distressed viscera is normally inhibited. Inflammation or irritation of an organ or viscera produces reflex stimuli through the sensory portion of the spinal nerves and alters the blood supply to areas of the body associated with the organ through the vasomotor nerves. Chronic inflammation of an organ may cause no conscious awareness of pain in that organ, but may cause intense aching in a region of the body associated with a specific organ. For example, the heart refers pain to the left arm, while the liver refers pain to the right shoulder. This means that all visceral dysfunction, irritation, and pain is first emitted from the abdominal viscera in distress, where it is transmitted to the abdominal brain, where it is reorganized as viscerosomatic pain, which prevents the localization of the pain by the diagnostician. The pain will be diagnosed based on the healthcare practitioner's speciality, for example, chiropractor, pinched nerve, physical therapy, muscle dysfunction, orthopedist, rotator cuff, massage therapist, muscle spasm. I've observed a patient treated for left shoulder bursitis for three weeks before the heart attack occurred. Dr. Dave, what is a visceromotor reflex? When an organ is irritated, overloaded, backed up, or distressed, it sends a sensory signal from the organ back to the abdominal brain. This sensory signal, if it is important enough or intense enough, will go to the abdominal brain to tell us where we hurt, for example, a stomach ache. In this case, we feel pain at the site of the affected organ. However, prior to feeling pain at the organ, any distress signal travels to the nerve endings controlling the blood supply to the spinal cord and spinal muscles controlling the movement of the vertebra. You then feel muscle tension or pain due to too much or too little blood supply to the vertebral muscles and the spinal cord near the vertebral level associated with the organ. This causes a loss of controlled movement of this related vertebra. Many people experience their adjustments not holding or they are always going out, having to get their backs constantly adjusted as a result of this visceromotor reflex. Dr. Dave, then what is a viscerosomatic reflex? This is caused by the same influences as the visceromotor reflex mentioned previously, as well as other self-imposed stressors. In this type of reflex, an organ is stressed, and it sends sensory signals to the abdominal brain, and it has connections with the vasomotor nerves, altering the blood flow in the muscular compartments of the body associated with the distressed organ. This is why viscerosomatic pain from distressed organs crosses nerve dermatomes. Vasomotor reflexes result in either hyperemia or ischemia to the nerves and muscles associated with the organ during embryologic development, which creates pain in a body part that appears unrelated to the viscera. For example, the heart causes pain in the left arm, neck, and even into the face. With the progress of the dysfunction and distress, the abdominal brain and associated nerves become accustomed to the experience and the pain becomes intensified, localizing on definite nerve plexuses, where the pain and tenderness can be diagnosed by distinct circumscribed localizations of the viscerosomatic pain patterns designated by Dr. Dejarnet and identified by acceptable fiber analysis. I often get asked, does somatic pain and visceral pain feel different? How can you tell the difference? Yes, somatic pain and visceral pain are actually two very different types of pain. Somatic pain is produced by the activation of pain receptors either on the surface of the body or in the musculoskeletal tissue inside the body. Common causes of somatic pain 
are generally explained as changes in the bone or pressure on nerves. Visceral pain arises from direct stimulation of vasomotor nerves controlling blood flow to the soft tissue or viscera causing the arteries to either constrict or dilate. Vasoconstriction, ischemia, disfigured red blood cells, and anemia can cause decreased function at the cellular level in any body tissue where it is occurring. A disturbed arterial blood flow marks the time to an hour and minutes when dysfunction begins to sow the seeds of destruction in the human body. There is no case of dysfunction that could occur without a damaged or interrupted arterial blood flow, which by its very nature is intended to supply and nourish all nerves, ligaments, muscles, skin, bones, and the artery itself. The vasomotor control of the artery must be absolute, universal, and unobstructed, or disease will be the result. Stretching, distension, or ischemia of the viscera may cause viscerosomatic pain. This pain tends to be poorly localized and often ill-defined. As already noted, visceral pain can be deep, achy, and colicky, often felt in the other areas of the body. Neuropathic pain is generally described as burning or electrical in nature. This type of pain is due to neuronal injury either by the effects of blood vessels constricting or ischemia due to conditions causing red blood cells aggregation or agglutination such as insulin resistance or in worst case scenarios diabetes. This can occur around the organs, spinal cord, or extremities and is usually never considered even with insulin resistance being diagnosed through blood tests. Somatic pain comes from skin and muscles. Pinched or irritated nerves follow specific patterns like the outlets and switches in your home that are on the same trip circuit breaker while other outlets remain unaffected. When pain crosses multiple nerve dermatones, referred pain from a distressed organ is the likely culprit. Both somatic and visceral pain are experienced the same way. However, organs do not have pain sensing nerves. Pain does not belong to the nerves of the abdominal brain, but to the spinal nerves associated with the organ. Because of this, all pain is considered to be of the somatic variety. Most healthcare providers are never taught the visceral somatic pain referral areas. Excess physical sensation or excess irritability due to organ dysfunction is liable to manifest pain irregularity occurring periodically or as a sudden reoccurrence or intensification of the symptoms and yet retain some irritability during the lulls between intervals. The symptoms from excess physical sensation or excess irritability of the dysfunctional organs are generally uniform and persistent throughout the duration of the visceral dysfunction. If you find yourself experiencing reoccurring pain that baffles your current doctor and you find yourself going from doctor to doctor with the same failing treatment, well, you know the old adage about the definition of insanity. It's time for a different perspective. Call my office for more information. And please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. This is Dr. Dave wishing you good health.